I didn't vote for him, an American once said, but he's my president and I hope he does a good job. That, on this eve of the 4th of July, is the essence of this democracy in 17 words. And that is what President Bush threw away yesterday in commuting the sentence of Lewis Scooter Libby. The man who said those 17 words, improbably enough, was the actor John Wayne. And John Wayne, an ultra-conservative, said them when he learned of the hair's breadth the election of John F. Kennedy instead of his personal favorite Richard Nixon in 1960. The crisp, matter-of-fact acknowledgement that our form of government has survived even though for nearly two centuries now, our commander-in-chief has also served simultaneously as the head of one political party and often the scourge of all others. We as citizens must at some point ignore a president's partisanship. Not that we may prosper as a nation, not that we may achieve, not that we may lead the world, but that merely we may function. But just as essential to the 17 words of John Wayne is an implicit trust, a sacred trust, that the president, for whom so many did not vote, can in turn suspend his political self long enough and for matters imperative enough to conduct himself solely for the benefit of the entire republic. Our generation's willingness to state we didn't vote for him, but he's our president, and we hope he does a good job, was tested in the crucible of history, and far earlier than most, and in circumstances far more tragic and threatening, and we did that with which history tasked us. We enveloped our president in 2001, and those who did not believe he should have been elected, indeed those who did not believe he had been elected, willingly lowered their voices and assented to the sacred oath of nonpartisanship. And George W. Bush took our assent and reconfigured it and honed it and sharpened it to razor-sharp points and stabbed this nation in the back with it. Were there any remaining lingering doubt otherwise, or any remaining lingering hope? It ended yesterday when Mr. Bush commuted the prison sentence of one of his own staffers. Did so even before the appeals process was complete. Did so without as much as a courtesy consultation with the Department of Justice. Did so despite what James Madison, at the Constitutional Convention, said about impeaching any president who pardoned or sheltered those who had committed crimes advised by that president did so without the slightest concern that even the most detached of citizens must look at this chain of events and wonder to what degree was Mr. Libby told, break the law however you wish, the president will keep you out of prison. In that moment, Mr. Bush, you broke that fundamental compact between yourself and the majority of this nation's citizens, the ones who did not cast votes for you. In that moment, Mr. Bush, you ceased to be the president of the United States. In that moment, Mr. Bush, you became merely the president of a rabid and irresponsible corner of the Republican Party. And this is too important a time, sir, to have a commander-in-chief who puts party ahead of nation. This has been, of course, the gathering legacy of this administration. Few of its decisions have escaped the stain of politics. The extraordinary Karl Rove has spoken of a permanent Republican majority. As if such a thing, or a permanent Democratic majority, is not antithetical to that upon which rests our country, our history, our revolution, our freedoms. Yet, our democracy has survived shrewder men than Karl Rove, and it has survived the frequent stain of politics upon the fabric of government. But this administration, with ever-increasing insistence and almost theocratic zealotry, has turned that stain into a massive oil spill. The protection of the environment is turned over to those of one political party who will financially benefit from the rape of the environment. The protections of the Constitution are turned over to those of one political party who believe those protections unnecessary and extravagant and quaint. The enforcement of the laws is turned over to those of one political party who will swear beforehand that they will not enforce those laws.